No, it's our secures the knockout. We get the boost back out. Comes Gator, and we're going to start looking to apply some shield pressure. The opponent invests that protect shield, and we're going to play the U shield, I shield game. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon. We're going to fire off the next Night Slash just before the Hydro Cannon. Night Slash forces the final protect shield. The opponent now puts themselves in wing attack farm down range. Glyscore looking to sweep the entire team. Can we nuke whatever's in the back? Out comes Flaugers. Is boosted Earthquake enough to knock out? Well, you're going to have to watch the video to find out. So welcome back to the channel. Today we have a dilemma. Not only are my videos performing terribly, I've seen other content creators like Dan Ottawa, Jonkus also complaining about this. Not that I particularly care. This, of course, isn't my full-time job. I do it because I enjoy it. However, the issue at hand is I think newer players simply are not interested in PvP. I personally think the reason for that is just how difficult it is to get into PvP. The Great League is a 1500 CP format. We've got Pokemon that max out close to 5,000 CP, but despite this, it is littered with XL Pokemon. Stuff like Wallface, aka Bastard on the stupid butt plug carving, Diggersby, the very thick Easter Bunny, and of course, Licky, far too thicky. We move on to the Ultra League, which of course I'm playing today. Again, the meta is heavily littered with XL Pokemon. The number one top ranked pick is of course the stupid Tin Can Reggie Steel. We've got stuff like Talonflame. Squidworth, aka Tentacruel, and the chunky squirrel Greedon. That squirrel is so annoying. It is so bulky. And even when you think it's going to die, don't worry. It, of course, always makes it a part in Body Slam. So today I'm going to be showing no XLs and no problem with a fully non excelled Triple Shadow team in the Open Ultra League. Without any further ado, let's get into the battles. And in game one, Willie Gliscor into Ampharos. This team is an ABB team where we're double weak to electric in the back. So Gliscor is looking to counter the electric types, but it's pretty awkward on Yolo and Nuke and the opponent invests that protect shield. We've now got two water types looking to be a boosted electric type user. The opponent fires off the trailblaze. I'm going to throw this scold at suboptimal timing because if this scold knocks out, the next Volt Switch will not register. However, the opponent chooses to go all in on Ampharos looking to sweep my team. Things aren't looking fantastic, but as the opponent's thrown yet another Trailblaze, I can send out Gator. We're not going to appreciate the two boosted Volt Switches that we're going to take. Just look at the damage, but we are going to be able to outpace the Hydro Cannon and save a Protect Shield. Gator, an absolute monster in the Ultra League, looking to sweep for a Protect Shield. The opponent enters the mirror, try the luck at catching a Hydro Cannon. I hold my energy, maximise my farm. Throw in the Hydro Cannon, Skeledurge going to be straight in and straight out. Get that Crocodile off my screen. Back out comes Gator. We make the catch back onto the low health Gliscor. Shadow and Shadow Crime, two Hydro Cannons will be enough to knock out. Can the opponent Shadow Claw farm me down? Before we reach the second, they cannot. Things might have looked rough, but I'm going to be able to pick up the dub. GG's and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we lead Shadow Gliscor into Toxicroak. What a beautiful lead. I imagine the opponent instantly pivots, however they're staying in. So if you're in a situation like this, you've got to think to yourself, why would the opponent stay in such a poor matchup? The only logical explanation is that they've got something else that doesn't want to see Gliscor in the back. So I shield up the Shadow Ball, heavily over farm, fire off the Night Slash. Night Slash won't be lethal, but we are going to be able to wing attack farm down before the next Shadow Ball. And we leave absolutely loaded. Out comes Greninja. Hashtag no bait on this channel. Does the opponent respect the damage? Of course, Earthquake goes shielded. We're going to force a shield and then send out Sweet Goon. And my team call is right. There's the other thing that doesn't want to see a ground type. Out comes Ampharos. We fire off the Scold. Scold forces a Protect Shield. The opponent allows me to reach the second Scold. And this should pretty much put them into Night Slash range. If you can hear some weird noise in the background, my neighbour's getting some mad extension. And we've got Scaffolders banging around. I apologise. The opponent is running Brutal Swing, which doesn't secure the knockout. And the opponent's forced to dump yet further energy. I send back out Gliscor. Switch timer did just pop up. However, the opponent didn't make the catch. Night Slash secures the knockout and I'm spamming the switch. Gator with a Protect Shield should be able to beat Greninja. Gator hits insanely hard and Greninja cannot tank a hit for shit. Of course, I'm never going to shield the first move. In case the opponent gets the boost, we're still at a Night Slash range. So we don't shield the next one. We throw one Shadow Claw and the Hydro Cannon for optimal fast move timing. Two turn into three turn. You need to throw at one, four or seven, as I did there. Of course, the path to victory, pretty easy for me. Shield up the Night Slash, one Shadow Claw, fire off the resisted Hydro Cannon, and that is going to be all she wrote. GG's, and thanks for playing.
In the next battle, we see Guzzlord in the lead. Guzzlord can be a quite a tricky Pokemon for this team. Wing Attack is the only quick move that hits the opponent for neutral. The Snarl on Suicune and Shadow Claw on Gator is both resisted. I throw the Earthquake on Alignment, which of course isn't a fantastic play, as if the opponent would have took the extra, they've got a free Dragon Tail, but luckily for me, the opponent also spammed the Charge move on Alignment, and they let the Earthquake land through two Protect Shields. After landing the Earthquake, we say switch into Suicune, the opponent chips me, and then tend to pivot themselves. We fire off the Scold, Scold lands on Gator for some very respectable resisted damage. We're still outside of Hydro Cannon range, and we should reach one further Scold. Sweet Coon able to reach the next Scold, and this will leave Gator very deep in the red. Scold goes unshielded. The opponent manages to Shadow Claw farm down. I'm just going to send out my own Gator. Look to commit to the Shadow Claw farm down and hope whatever's in the back doesn't have massive fast move pressure. We do get a very nice Shadow Claw farm down. If the opponent sends back out Guzzlord, we're going to fire off four Shadow Claws and the Hydro Cannon, trying to make amends for my poor fast move timing earlier. Hydro Cannon does secure the knockout and out comes Skeledurge. The last part of this battle has been slowed down because I don't think I played it particularly well, so we're going to talk through some of my mistakes. So two turn into five turn, you ideally want to throw two quick moves or seven, that'd be four turns into five turns or 14 turns into 15 turns, only giving away one free turn. The first Hydro Cannon did fire after seven Shadow Claws, which was optimal. I then looked at my health, thought I wouldn't survive the next Incinerate. So to guarantee getting the move off, I only threw one Shadow Claw. Evidently, I did survive, so I managed to give the opponent three free turns and not get off my one further Shadow Claw. The opponent then starts making mistakes, so what they should be doing is fast move beating me down as I've got two Protect Shields. Instead, every time they throw a charge move, I get a free wing attack, which would allow me to reach the Earthquake. So at the point I throw this Night Slash, I'm only two wing attacks off the next move. I've already took the Incinerate, so I'd reach the Earthquake on turn eight. That next Incinerate that knocked me out wouldn't have registered, as it would register on turn nine. So I could have Earthquaked them for the dub. We didn't get new mechanic either on the Night Slash, but regardless, we played the end game really poorly, but we managed to emerge victorious. So do as I say, not as I do, and you'll be a better battler than washed up Jamie Finn. Heading into the next battle, dreadful lead. My Sweet Coon say switch is met by Glissopod. I love using Sweet Coon. I don't see many other people use it, but it's pretty good against other water types not named Polyrath. The opponent can hit us for neutral with the X scissors, but two resisted scolds do get them quite low. Last season it was pretty nice when you'd be getting attack drops left, right and centre, but despite that, we managed to put this into perfect farm down range for our Glide score. Sonic the Hedgehog also banked an Ice Punch in the opening matchup before pivoting into this bog. So we're going to come in, we're going to commit to the full wing attack farm down, and we're going to spam the switch, anticipating the opponent looking to force a shield. We managed to catch the Ice Punch onto Gator where it isn't going to do much damage whatsoever, and the opponent sends out Tapu Fini. This is a matchup that Nature's Madness really helps out Feeny. Last season, it took him 20 turns to reach the Moonblast that only had a 10% chance to lower my attack, whereas this season it only takes him 17 turns to the Nature's Madness that comes to a 100% chance to debuff my defense. I respect the Nature's Madness. The opponent baits with the Surf like an absolute savage. However, this is only a Surf. I personally think the opponent should have thrown the Nature's Madness because all they're going to do here is allow me to Shadow Claw farm them all the way down and reach back-to-back -back Hydro Cannons. However, the opponent does have two Protect Shields. The first Hydro Cannon forces a Protect Shield. This next move is going to have to go unshielded because the opponent's going to have to save a Shield for a potential Earthquake. We force the Shield and send out Gliscor. Luckily for me, this isn't a Shadow Alolan Sand Slash. Ice Punch only does around 70%. I build to the Earthquake bait with the Night Slash. Night Slash... Forces the Protect Shield, we get the boost. Is this boosted Night Slash now enough to knock out? No, it's not. The opponent reaches one further Ice Punch. However, as they aren't a Shadow, we are going to survive. We're double boosted. The Wing Attack takes them out and we manage to take that game. Apologies, the poor defenseless cat I killed with the bait return in the end game. In the next battle, we see Shadow and Shadow Crime. Gliscor into Gator, we're going to count to five and look to catch the Hydro Cannon onto Suicune, banking our energy. Hydro Cannon doesn't do all that much damage. You can see the bulk difference between Suicune and Gator. In the mirror, the Shadow Gator mirror, two Hydro Cannons essentially knock out. You saw that in the first battle, whereas Suicune can easily tank two and the residual Shadow Claws. The opponent stays in, we fire off the Scold. Scold goes unshielded and the opponent looks to dump energy. 
The opponent hasn't overfarmed whatsoever. I don't want to reveal my third. We lose CMP, so what I'm going to do is come in with Gliscor. I'm going to throw four Wing Attack and the Night Slash, looking to secure the knockout and leave him with residual energy. If the opponent shields this, unfortunately, I'm going to have to shield in return, but we are going to leave with so much energy. The opponent looks to exchange shields, and we're just going to roll with that. We then get a very nice Wing Attack farm down, leave close to an Earthquake, and out comes Swamper again. We count to five, catch the next Hydro Cannon onto Gator, Banking close to 100 energy, if not 100 energy, onto Gliscor. The opponent continues to stay in, so we're going to fire off the Hydro Cannon. The Hydro Cannon won't be lethal from this range, but will leave the opponent incredibly low. At this stage, trainer, enjoy yourself. We're going to put it all on the mighty Scorpion. The opponent baits with the Hydro Cannon, which we survive, and then opt to throw back to back. The opponent's just in farm down range, but we're going to put all in our Scorpion to sweep. Out comes Charizard. We've got 100 energy. Surely this is playable. The first Night Slash goes unshielded, but Gliscor says there's plenty more of where that came from. The next Night Slash forces the Protect Shield. We get another boost. We're then going to throw the Earthquake. Earthquake does do more damage despite being single resisted. We shield up the Dragon Claw. Throw that Earthquake. It's going to be high Charizard. by Charizard. Get that Charizard off my screen. We're going to Wing Attack Farm down Swamper and take that game. As we're in week four of the season, I know a lot of people are expecting not to see early ranked battles. You'll all be pleased to know, despite me taking nine days off at the start of the season, this was my final set before I get ELO. We've got a fairly decent-ish win rate. I guess it's like 63% or something. However, we got absolutely clapped in the final day of Summer Cup, going 1-9 and nine with Sharpedo. So my start in ELO was somewhat lower than I was expected. We started at 2,178, heading into some bonus battles. We see Guzzlord again in the lead. Last time, I did throw an alignment, so this time we're going to look to throw after 10, or let the opponent throw first, and then throw at 1, 4, or 7. The opponent fires off the Dragon Claw, which allows me very nicely to 1 and throw the Earthquake. Does the opponent respect the damage? Of course they invest that Protect Shield. I never get any bait calls correct. The opponent answers my Sweet Coon save switch with Trevenant. However, Ice Beam going to do absurd damage if the opponent shows no respect. They fucked about. They found out Sweet Coon smelling the opportunity to take switch. We shield up the Seed Bomb, commit to the Snarl Farm down and leave very close to an Ice Beam. Back out comes Guzzlord. We throw the Ice Beam, losing CMP, however, no one move will knock us out. And the opponent's already seen just how much Ice Beam does. Ice Beam manages to force the opponent's final Protect Shield. The opponent then makes a very heads-up play, catching the Ice Beam and banking their energy. Ice Beam isn't going to do too much damage onto Tapu Fini. However, we can easily send out Gator to operate as the damage sponge. I still have one Protect Shield too high behind. And at the time of playing this battle, I was thinking Nature's Madness probably hits harder than a Dragon Claw, Brutal Swing, or Crunch from Guzzlord. That's probably correct information. However, a Nature's Madness only has around 50%, so I didn't need to shield the first move. I should have tanked the first, looked to shield the second, and then get the Ice Beam ready for Guzzlord to win CMP. The opponent doesn't actually have a move bank. They commit to the Crunch, allow me to reach the Ice Beam. We're going to pick up the dub, but again, cleaner plays could have been made. I think I'm quite critical of my battles. However, once upon a time, I was able to reach Legend six consecutive seasons only using Shadow Pokemon, and I think my gameplay was evidently a lot cleaner. In the next battle, we see Tapu Fini in the lead. It's a no thank you for me and a say switch into Sweet Goon. The opponent banks quite a lot of energy, actually 16 water guns, and then say switch into the Tin Can. This is by no means the worst matchup, especially with a huge energy lead. When I like to run an ABB team, I'm always looking to get some kind of advantage in the mid game, and in this scenario, we managed to obtain ourselves shield advantage. Gliscor will be fully walling the usual moveset of Focus Blast and Zap Cannon, so I'm going to farm up to 100 energy before nuking this stupid Tin Can with the Earthquake. The opponent already on one Protect Shield, very unlikely. To shield this next move up, we secure the knockout. The opponent has the Surf Bank. I hope they spammed it, they did not. As I've got two shields, I'm going to look to keep my health, shielding up the Nature's Madness. As I said previously, it does around 50%. The opponent's continuing to stay in. I'm always looking to heavily over farm before unleashing a charge move, having residual energy for whatever's in the back. We managed to fire off the next Hydro Cannon on the CMP tie. Hydro Cannon goes unshielded, and I've got a tough decision to make. We're just going to put it all on Gliscor. The opponent actually baits with the Surf, then send out Skeledurge. Skeledurge instantly going to be greeted. With the Hydro Cannon, Hydro Cannon forces the opponent's final protection. We can now pivot out into Gliscor. 
we're easily going to be able to outpace this thing to the Earthquake Gliscor. Going to get in on the big boom action. I maximise my energy. Looking to get the Night Slash ready for the return in Tapu Fini Earthquake. Knocks out Skeledurge. Night Slash, despite being resisted, is going to knock out Tapu Fini. And Gliscor is a Tapu Fini counter, confirmed, with the flex boost in the endgame. Heading into the next battle. We see our old nemesis, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, Bird of Death. We throw seven wing attacks, catch what should be a flame charge onto Sweet Goon and sneak a snarl in the process. Our Sweet Goon save switch is met by Venusaur. I look to fire off the Ice Beam, but the opponent's like, nah, 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 we win CMP. They throw the Frenzy Plant as soon as they get it, knocking us out. Things do not look fantastic. It takes Venusaur six Vine Whips, then a further six for the Frenzy Plant. So I throw five wing attacks, look to go for the kill shot. On the Earthquake, Earthquake secures that one-hit KO. However, this does not look fantastic as we are still switch-locked. Back out comes Talonflame. I fire a four-wing attack and the Night Slash. The opponent now has a Flame Charge bank. I look to catch it onto Gator unsuccessfully. This could be a Brave Bird, so I'm going to respect it. The opponent throws the Fly and then send out Mandavaz. Again, we're going to look to Nuke. Does the opponent respect the damage? Ugh. Brutally. Again, my nuke gets shielded. We've had pretty dreadful alignment throughout this battle. However, it isn't over until the fat lady sings. The opponent on the hard hit and dark pulse, then throw an aerial ace, and they are completely energy dry. Again, I'm going to throw one shadow claw and the ice beam, looking to do maximum damage or force the final protect shield. We force the final protect shield and stay in school, kids. Learn to count. There's the catch. Back onto Gliscor. If the opponent pivots, we have a wink on. I'm looking top right. Out comes Talonflame. We throw the Night Slash. We're going to go for an Undercharge and look to put this into free Shadow Claw range. The Undercharge looks like an absolute beauty. We look for the farm down. Oh. The opponent just reaches the move. I'm unsure if that's new mechanic, but regardless, I think I played that as close as I could and it wasn't meant to be. GG's to that opponent. In the next battle, we see Venusaur in the lead. Not too bad for our flying type. It would be a lot better if we had Aerial Ace. So we would be able to hit for super effective. I build the Earthquake, pause a turn, ensuring it's still on my screen. And we go for the Night Slash bait. Night Slash, force to protect you. And at this stage, I'm like, trainer, this is just a Night Slash. Please let it go. The opponent chooses to invest that protect you. And I'm thinking, shit. This team is ABB weak to grass, as well as ABB weak to electric. So Gliscor, of course, is our one Venusaur counter. I'm hoping this Night Slash does secure the knockout, but Venusaur hangs on with a sliver of HP. And of course, I can't make a catch, so we're just going to have to sack Gliscor and hope there's no further Grass type or Electric type in the back. We send out Sweet Coon, get a one snarl running start, and the opponent sends out Mel Metal. What is this Tin Can doing here? I haven't seen this thing in about 10 seasons, probably, and that isn't even an exaggeration. The opponent looks to build to a potential Thunderbolt, and I'm thinking, uh oh. Do they have it? They don't. They throw the superpower. You can see the second one with a debuff certainly isn't knocking out. And the opponent probably looks to reset their debuff. They do indeed reset in their debuff. Send it out Talon Flame. Scold should be forcing the final protect shield or not. The opponent looks to tank it. We're just going to come in with Gator. Completely Shadow Claw farmed out. Even a Brave Bird won't be lethal. The opponent actually had the Brave Bird, which I wasn't expecting. How will we leave with the Hydro Cannon? Hydro Cannon is going to be all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. In the next battle, we see another Shadow Gator. So, of course, we're going to count to five. Look to catch onto Sweet Goon. The last opponent stayed in. To be honest, I don't dislike if the opponent would stay in. This opponent actually looked to send out Giratina. Giratina isn't a Sweet Goon counter by any means, as we've got Snarl that hits for super effective and, of course, that Ice Beam coverage. No baiting, does Ice Beam land? The opponent lets it through and it does very respectable damage considering we don't get same type attack bonus. I'm not going to make a play at switch advantage. Instead, I'm going to send out Gliscor. You can play this one of two ways. You can throw the Night Slash on the CMP tie or you can tank the first move and CMP the second. As I've got a huge energy lead against Gator, I just opt to throw this immediately. Looking for the knockout and we get the boost back out. Comes Gator and now... As we're boosted, Shadow and Shadow Chrome, we're going to be applying massive fast move pressure. The opponent shields the Night Slash build to the Ice Beam. Of course, they're going to Hydro Cannon here. Either way, I would be shielding again. We're going to throw the Night Slash one quick move before the opponent reaches the Hydro Cannon. Night Slash forces the opponent's final Protect Shield. This is easily farmed down range. Gliscor looks to sweep the entirety of the team trainer. You're going to get farmed down. The opponent gives me the full farm down. 
The final Pokemon is Flaudrius. Is a boosted Earthquake enough to knock out? No, it's not. We could Wing Attack Farm down, but I'm going to show him the third. The opponent opts to throw the Disarming Voice for no reason whatsoever, of course. It isn't going to knock out. We're going to Shadow Claw Farm down and take that game. Gliscor absolutely popping off. In the next battle, we see Squidworth in the lead. Being a ground top, you'd think this is a good matchup, but it only takes the opponent 8 to reach a skull that is the super effective. So we're going to bank all our energy and send out Sweet Coon. The opponent actually looked at Acid Spray Bait by ground type. What a savage. The opponent continues to stay in and they are continuing to spray the shit out of me. Again, on my save switch, I look to maximize energy before throwing a charge move. The opponent tanks the first gold. We're able to reach the second skull. Skull won't quite be lethal. But essentially against all water types, we've put in quite a lot of work. The opponent very easily find himself in Night Slash range. I'm going to wait out my clock. I am going to throw it immediately, looking to deny the energy. If the opponent shields, I guess they shield, we shield. The opponent chooses not to invest that Protect Shield and then send out Umbreon. This is one of the few Pokemon I imagine. We can YOLO the Earthquake through two Protect Shields as who the hell shields Umbreon. We managed to land the Earthquake. After throwing the correct 7 wing attacks for good fast Mutai, we tank the foul play. We're going to look to catch the next foul play onto Gator, saving our Gly score for potentially whatever they've got in the back. The opponent throw the foul play and then send out Steelix on Thunderfang. What the heck is this? Shadow Gator looking very angry at these Thunderfangs. We force a Protect Shield. I'm going to look to force the final Protect Shield or do big damage. Ideally, I want the opponent to shield this as Earthquake would do more than a Hydro Cannon. The opponent invests that final Protect Shield. They're going to get the full Thunderfang farm down and it's going to all be about energy management. I need to ensure I've got enough residual energy to outpace Umbreon to the charge move. So I heavily over farm, fire off the Earthquake, Earthquake, going to be vanquishing this Steel Snake. Back to its Pokeball, Steelix. Get off my screen, back out. Comes Umbreon, we outpace to the second Earthquake and Gliscor claims back-to-back -back victims. GG's and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle, we see Charizard in the lead. Not the worst matchup, however, as we're on an ABB team, we're going to try our luck at catching the Blast Burn onto Suicune and look to bait out a potential Grass type or Electric type. The opponent has Chestnut, which of course doesn't look fantastic. We have drawn out what we're looking to bait out. We land the Ice Beam. The opponent can now heavily over farm before firing off the Frenzy Plant. So with this out of the way, we're going to hope that Gator can sweep the back line. We're going to wait out our clock as we know we're going to be switch locked when Charizard does return. We're going to look for the full wing attack farm down. Frenzy Plant hits for neutral but isn't going to hit anywhere near as hard as the Blast Burn from Charizard. I stop attacking, trying to call off my timer. I'm spamming the switch, looking to catch the Dragon Claw and we do do that successfully, banking all of our energy. Let's hope with Chestnut out of the way. They're very weak to Gator. The opponent tries to like catch the Hydro Cannon onto Kingdra. And this is not what we're looking for. Ice Beam does hit for neutral, but nowhere near one shots. The opponent has two Protect Shields. Choose to shield up the first. We're going to go straight for the second. Even if the opponent doesn't shield this, it isn't going to knock out. You can see it does respectable damage. The opponent gets the full Dragon Ref farm down. I send out Gliscor. Fire off the Night Slash. Night Slash will be knocking out, but we've got hardly any HP. The opponent does me a favour, throwing a charge move. From here, I guess the wing con is. Me being able to survive the wing attacks, the opponent shielding this Night Slash, us boosting, and the boosted Night Slash knocking out. Although that is very optimistic. We don't even survive the wing attack, and we take a loss. GG's to that opponent. In the next battle, we see... Our good old nemesis, the Kentucky Fried Chicken Bird of Death. So we always throw the seven wing attacks, catch onto Sweetcoon. This time we've drawn out Gator, which is by no means bad for us. We've seen this is a pretty neutral matchup with both our quick moves hitting the neutral and the charge moves hitting the resisted, unless the opponent is running crunch. The opponent throws at really poor timing, which is of course advantageous for us. The opponent needs to throw at one, four or seven. We always need for an odd number, so I want and throw the charge move, and we manage to force ourselves shield advantage. I'm not going to shield up my sweet coon. The opponent throws the Hydro Cannon, they don't manage to knock out, and they get a very nice Shadow Claw farm down. I'm thinking, should I throw the Night Slash immediately, or are we going to need energy on Gliscor? We've seen we've managed to nuke a lot of stuff with Earthquake, so I'm actually going to give up a Protect Shield, look to over farm, having almost 100 energy before knocking them out. Night Slash from this range will be knocking out. We leave with so much energy. Back out comes Talonflame. I instantly pivot into Gator, drawing out Steelix. Gator, core breaking the remainder of the team. 
However, Gator isn't going to be able to 1v2 because Steelix is so fucking annoying. The opponent fire off the breaking swipe, get in the attack drop. Of course they do. Why wouldn't they? Again, we're going to throw a good time and throw the next Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon goes unshielded. At this stage now, I'm forced to start shielding. We're going to maximize our energy before firing off the Hydro Cannon. You can see these Dragon Tails tearing me apart. We're now two off the Hydro Cannon. I'm unsure if I survive the Incinerate. So what we're going to do is one and throw, transfer the Incinerate into Gliscor, force the energy. Even if the opponent takes me out, they are in Hydro Cannon range. The opponent doesn't take me out. We one and throw the Night Slash. I should have thrown the Earthquake for bad manners, but it is what it is. We now have to come back in, throw one, reach the Hydro Cannon before the Incinerate registers and take that game. GG to that opponent. And that unfortunately is going to wrap things up for today's video. So that was a Triple Shadow non-XL team in the Open Ultra League. If you want to see more non-XL Triple Shadow teams in the Open Ultra League, post it down below and I'll look to show you some more teams. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you like your battles featured on my channel. A link to a battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching and I'll see you all in...